Hello and welcome. Now, I am having a Gigi shirt on, but I have relevance to why I'm wearing it today. Because today we are talking about Toy Story 3. And yes, I know that Toy Story 3 is Pixar and this is Studio Ghibli, but because I don't have any Toy Story merchandise really when it comes to clothing wise, and I've exhausted my options for the cowboy wear that I had, I don't have anything with Buzz Lightyear or anything. I wanted to rep Studio Ghibli because we do have Studio Ghibli within this film with Totoro. Hey! <laughs> I go to college. Look at me. I'm Big Toy on campus. Hello. Hey, I'll see you at the Zaka. It made me so happy to see Totoro again, and I know that John Lasseter was a really huge Studio Ghibli fan, and he really helped push getting Studio Ghibli to America. So represent. I am forever in love with Gigi because Gigi was the first of my characters that I knew from Studio Ghibli and Totoro is now a new favorite because it took me forever to watch that film but I love that film so much! So now I am on the workings of getting a Totoro and different Totoro merchandise but for now we're repping with Gigi and we're gonna talk about Toy Story 3. <laughs> Not too shabby, huh? Look at this! And you guys were worried. Didn't I tell you it looked great, huh? Oh, Buzz, where the heck have you been? Sorry, Woody. I've been up all night working on a little something. Hey, wow! Yeah, that's quality craftsmanship. Look at that. Oh, it's nothing, wow. really. Your basic vacuum form polycarbonate with a high gloss sealer to bring out the shine. Toy Story 3 was released in 2010. It was also the year that I graduated, and it has so much relevance to me because of that and I hated seeing that movie because it makes everything so much sadder because what Andy's age of 17 even though the timelines are a little bit weird I don't know where it is because when he was in 95 he seemed older than three years old so the fact that he's 17 in this film and he's graduating high school in 2010 but again I can't really question Pixar logic <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of an unneeded but needed story. Does the red light mean it's going? Come on, say happy birthday to Molly. You got a friend in me. Happy oh, charming. You got a friend in me. Look how tall you're getting. When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. Just remember what your it's a terribly sad story and when the toys are dealing with the humans there's so much emotion that you have that everything is complete sadness because it's like everyone's dying basically and being put up in the attic and it's just filled with sadness and then when they get to Sunnyside daycare and they're dealing with Lotso and all those adventures it's a weird mafia type of film so it's weird but it works like it's not anything that extreme that doesn't make sense and the direction makes sense of where it goes into and the story they follow makes sense but when breaking it down it's just very strange with the direction that they decided to go into and it's a nice homage back to their first short tin toy which we've talked about previously where the babies look at toys like they're just chew toys and the toys think of babies as monsters And it does have a more expanded view here with the toddlers. And we also have, this is a case of our villains not being portrayed as villains until the end. Because this is Lotso Huggins there. And, and you can see that he smells like strawberries. And he does indeed smell like strawberries. And that's the reason I bought him. And thank you Disney, by the way, for the marketing techniques that you literally will get people to buy villain bears and villains because of the fact that they smell nice. And because you market in the movie that I smell like strawberries, and you do, that's the only reason I wanted this for the longest time, so I can smell it and smell strawberries because I love strawberries. 
Lot to look forward to, folks. The little ones love new toys. What a nice bear. And he smells like strawberries. I don't care about the character. He's, he's, I, I really don't like the character, ironically. I think Lotso is a terrible bear toy thing, and he's a very great villain for the fact that he is just very stubborn and stupid, and I just, uh, him and Big Baby. Big Baby is a nightmare. And I know they could not market Big Baby because Big Baby is so creepy and scary looking. And if in reality Big Baby actually went back to Daisy, it would have terrified her and completely scarred her for life because ugh, they're so creepy. So creepy. So creepy. <laughs> so instead we have Lotso as our villain, not really until the end villain, but I mean you can even see his eyes are all squinted because he's thinking of villainous plops to take over. It's just such a weird concept. It's such a strange concept and it's a really weird concept thinking about and bringing apart that toys are alive and that they have feelings and that they're sad when you throw them away and you move on because Andy's 17 and obviously Andy and Andy's a little bit weird too. Like Andy's not all there because he's a 17 year old guy. When I knew 17 year old guys and even now I feel like they're worse. <laughs> compared to when I was 17. It seems like they just care about their cell phones and skateboarding and doing drugs. <laughs> Other things that adults do and they don't care about toys. And the fact that he even thinks about taking Woody, I mean, I guess because Woody is like a security blanket to him. Because you have your toys from when you're young that you care about and other things that you care about. But I never had that. Now Woody, he's been my pal for as long as I can remember. He's brave, like a cowboy should be, and kind and smart. But the thing that makes Woody special is he'll never give up on you, ever. He'll be there for you, no matter what. That's why I'm the one that's kind of the odd one out because I appreciate toys more now as a collector's item, I guess, but not to play with. I like them as part of the decor and I think that they're cute to display and they add pieces to your household to make things fun. But when it came to playing with things, I always play with computers. So I never was really into toys. I took the clothes off of Barbie dolls and just left them naked apparently <laughs> and didn't play with anything I would maybe do two minutes I did a lot of tea time apparently I did a lot of tea time and I apparently am secretly British inside <laughs> because I love tea <laughs> and it started even then I like to play tea time and drink water out of teacups I was told when I was young so I'm the wrong audience marketing person <laughs> Because I don't appreciate toys for being played with and I think they're creepy and <laughs> I do I still was very sad because I do relate to the fact about graduating and moving on to the next chapter in your life and everything's changing and that's where they get you and that's where it's terribly sad and I was crying at so many parts of this movie it is such a sad film and it's more sad than happy that I hate watching it because you have three thirds, the first and the third third are the ones that are terrible. The middle is the one where everything action wise happens and it's not sad, it's just strange. But then you have a little bit more but that's more going into the third act when you find out the origin story with Lotso and Big Baby and Chuckles. And then meeting Bonnie and all the different characters and <laughs> there's really good characters. I really appreciate the characters, I do. They really do have some solid characters for the toys. And I think that's also why 
we're gonna have a really successful Toy Story land and that's something to look forward to because the characters are great. I just am, I just can't appreciate everything about this film. It's a fantastic film, but compared to the second and the first film, the second's still my favorite. And this one's really great and I love the relationship between Barbie and Ken and how they are able to expand on that. What advice would you give a toy who's serious about becoming a Ken? Well, if you're really serious. Don't be! You're a Ken doll! And being Ken is about having fun! The concept to me always gets me. So it's not a negative review because I really, really admire this film. And this film is a really great send off and it's really important and really sweet to end the series. However, they're not ending the series, so that's another problem. They ended the series on Andy, but now they're making a fourth Toy Story, which is coming out next year, in 2019. And I don't think it's needed. I know they have the shorts, I know they have Toy Story Land, but at the same time, you have so many rides for Disney that aren't done. And you can just, like, you are good to enjoy what's happening in the parks without having to have another movie come out. Let's talk about how Up is still relevant. That film came out 15 years ago and we still have new relevancy in the parks and we were fine with that one film. That one film is still iconic enough to have a stage show and meet and greets and track different things like that. So why do we have to keep pushing out new Toy Story films to have a Toy Story Land relevancy. The characters are iconic. They've said it themselves. It's a timeless feel. And I wish that they would just leave things be at this point because the Toy Story franchise is perfectly done and everything was so wrapped up nicely and it was a nice goodbye to the films. But no, <laughs> they have to milk the cow as much as I can. I am excited for Toy Story Land. At least that way, the next time that we talk about Toy Story, it'll be with Toy Story Land. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about more sequels that are not needed with Cars 2. So stay tuned, and as always, I hope you have a magical day, and I will see you real soon.